Hey guys, Jengar here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at the Yak 23 now sitting at 7.7 .7 battle rating. The Yak 23 got a battle rating increase in uh, one of the last mini patches from 7.3 to 7.7. .7. And uh, well, today we're looking at if there's any difference. We have looked at many of the planes that got a uh, battle rating increase and usually these small increases do not matter at all and especially in this case it is true that the 7.3 or 7.7 .7 don't matter at all for this plane it only matters for the 7 point or for the 6.3 opposition that does not face this plane anymore which is a boon to many of the 6.3 planes and that's really I guess what it's meant for subtle change but for the performance of this plane really doesn't matter because this plane is good against 8.0 planes and very good against 7.0 planes and ridiculous against props but that's another matter it will only face uh, one prop as of now and uh, that is a good thing Maximum speed in this plane at sea level is 897 kilometers an hour. At 4500 meters, 710. And if you go up to 6500 meters, you can gather up to 628 kilometers an hour. Top speed in a dive, 950 kilometers an hour before it redlines. And the ripping speed, just like last time, it ha has not changed. This thing can rip apart from about 800 kilometers an hour when you are uh, rolling or when you are using elevator or other services in a dive when you're above 750 it, I happen, it happened to me once uh, at around 750 but especially above 800 kilometers an hour where it starts to happen more regularly is you can rip this plane apart very very easily and you're actually lucky if you can reach the red line the 950 red line I only reached that once in test and all the other times before that I fell apart before that time. So take that into account. This plane is not really a boom and zoom aircraft because the jet speeds uh, are thus that this plane has a constant risk of falling apart from 750 onwards. We uh, managed to rip that G91. It took off a wing and he jumps out now. So count that as a kill shall we <laughs> we maneuvered him into ripping that is always quite nice very dangerous uh, for ripping the uh, G91s especially when you have boosters on them the stall speed in the Yak 23 is 130 kilometers an hour which is quite nice and control stiffening is not really an issue you notice a tiny bit of control stiffening at 700 but uh, it really is no issue it stays very maneuverable in the dive but like I said, it, it starts at 700, but at 750 you can rip her apart, so be careful in a dive. The firepower in the plane is decent, it has 2 times 23 mm NR33 cannons with 90 rounds per gun. I used air targets and 600 meter convergence. The ammo load is no more than average with 90 rounds, you really run through pretty quickly. And uh, as you saw in the beginning, we uh, didn't have much success with our first ammo load, so we had to go back. And after ripping that uh, G91, we rearmed and we got back into action. We are, by the way, the only plane left on our team. And we're in a 1 versus 5 right now. And there goes the first opponent. 1 versus 4 now. <laughs> but another uh, G91. No problem for the Yak 23. It can definitely compete. At 8.0 performance of the plane is really very very good the acceleration in a straight line is excellent in a dive very good energy retention in the horizontal is excellent and in the vertical it is good so and that is actually complemented with the climb rate which is excellent excellent climb rate in the plane uh, turn time is good with flaps as well but the flaps are not really usable on a jet with rip speed of 420 kilometers an hour so you rip them off really really early and that is uh, really not usable on a jet i have to say the roll rate in the plane is very good 
and um, yeah, the overall performance in that sense is uh, amazing. Maneuverability overall with the good turn time and the very good roll rate is a good to very good, excellent maneuverability. You can do a lot of shenanigans in this plane. Overheating in the plane is not an issue and uh, the durability is pretty good. It does take a lot of, it can take a lot of damage on the fuselage, but uh, the wings are pretty fragile when you get hit on there. It's very difficult to control when you get hit. They, you have small surface uh, on the wings and um, it does suffer a lot if a wing gets damaged, let's say. I cannot stand this kind of uh, complaints, by the way. This guy uh, complaining about the damage of the 30 millimeters on the Schwalbe. And uh, he basically blames Gaijin and the guns for his failure to hit me because he didn't hit me at all. None of his shells hit home. So he basically is blaming the guns for his shitty aim. And uh, <laughs> that happens a lot in War Thunder, by the way. People blaming anything else but their own skills. And that's really a shame because that keeps the, the skill level of the average pilot pretty low. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you heard that. I checked the, the, the player uh, count after that and he was already gone. So he probably didn't see that. But uh, I had to respond. That just irritates me so much. You place the blame outside of yourself that way. Oh, we almost got him there. He almost got us as well, by the way. But uh, I don't think I hit him and he doesn't hit me either. So there is that. We're going to extend because this uh, ME-163 is also right behind us. We do have more speed though. We managed to extend. We place the airfield between us and them. Uh, they back off for now and I'm able to land. Because we are again out of shells. We have 10 shells left. And we definitely need some uh, new ammunition. So we're going in for landing again, that happens in this plane, you can uh, expect more landings than average to get some more ammo. Most jets have better, better ammo load than this uh, thing, but the major things in this thing are uh, the uh, danger of losing a wing in a dive, not very good as a boom and zoomer in uh, jet combat this plane, because most jets can last longer in a dive than this plane. But you also want to look out for, as you saw it happen once or twice, is that you lose control very easily in this plane. I have an excellent crew uh, where I've put this plane and um, the pilot maxed out and uh, most things maxed out and I still black out now and then. You have to be uh, very active with your pitch, negative pitch, to pull yourself out of the blackouts early and if you forget it too long, even with a good crew like as you saw, you uh, can manage to uh, lose control very easily. I, will, I look at this plane as mainly an energy fighter that can turn as well. It's very good, the performance in this plane is very good. Excellent acceleration and energy retention. And uh, combined with a good climb rate and, and, and the climb and in the, the, the performance in the vertical. It is an amazing energy fighter and uh, you can turn with it as well. It can outperform most jets in that department as well. So that is good. The only thing you've got to be careful of is planes coming from above, boom and zooming you. Although you can outmaneuver them often, be careful of losing control while you do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, you are not better in a dive, so you cannot escape when it comes to that. So you, if you are under the, under the attacks of a boom and zoomer that is disciplined, you will have difficulties uh, getting out of it. But of course, anybody can be... Uh, made to overshoot and uh, kill in that uh, way but uh, it is the only weakness of this plane in my eyes there's the Ho 229 he finally came off the airfield there's two people left this Ho 229 in the ME 163 that's still flying around somewhere I saw him going off from the base when I uh, took off and I haven't seen him since but he can probably spot me by now because we are in view range of this O229 who is uh, seemingly unaware of us. We get a hit in but then he uh, gets alerted of course. Unfortunately not more damage than, uh, than just a hit. Something is damaged though, maybe the oil tank. Looks like an oil tank, it's black smoke. So when you, uh, when you get black smoke it's usually the oil tank when you get uh, white smoke it is usually the uh, water and when it's gray it's uh, fuel 
that's how you can can identify by an enemy what uh, what's going on what you actually damage here we go final approach let's see if we can get him yeah I'm waiting here to get closer the uh, 23 millimeter cannons are more reliable when you are close with them and definitely but uh, and definitely more effective that way but as you saw you can also be effective at longer ranges with the early head-ons that I did win if you get a few of the shells on target then you're absolutely capable of, uh, of doing a lot of damage But in general, especially with, uh, with the drop-off of these shells, then uh, sh shorter ranges are better with the guns. Now he's turning away. I lost control again, by the way. We're rolling. And here we go back to the airfield because we are out of shells. We took a lot of shells for that whole 229. We found him back at his airfield, we tracked him all the way back there, this was a 40 minute match by the way. Took a long time flying around and stuff. And he's at the airfield and he is basically circling the airfield. I don't know if he's out of shells or whether he's playing defensively and trying to get me to uh, kill myself on the AAs. The tickets are completely equal. Uh, but I do want to win this match, but I don't want to go in right now and run the risk of uh, getting damaged and then the tickets run down and I crash. And that makes him win, of course, then. So I wanted to give myself the best opportunity to actually win this match, but I also got a little frustrated that he didn't just use the airfield to reset. You know, I'm not uh, against using the airfield to use it as a tactical reset. I, I do that all the time. I mean, fly past the airfield, let the people go away again. Uh, most people will, uh, you know, turn the other way when they come close to the airfield. That gives you an opportunity to reset the situation, climb behind the airfield and then go back into the battlefield. But he did everything except climbing and go back into the battlefield. So he's just waiting there at the airfield and just taunting me to come in, come closer every now and then. And then he goes uh, back to the airfield again. So that's what he's trying to do. That's a different tactic from using it tactically in a, for a reset when you're followed by three or four opponents and then you using the airfield as a reset button. But uh, we managed to uh, kill that group of vehicles that made their tickets go down and now I feel like I will go in and try to get a run on him. I'm building up speed and I hope to get him on this one pass through the airfield and I hope I will survive. <laughs> and if the tickets do take their next tick down then I will win that's why I took that group out first so I don't get him he turns right in the, the exact uh, right moment where I'm uh, a little bit uh, control stiffened and, uh, and he can escape unfortunately he stays alive as the final tick comes through and it comes through before I crash into the ground from the AA damage because they did give me big damage on the wings And the whole plane actually. So here we go, we've got final blow, anti-mech, terror of the sky and bulletproof, 56,000 silver lions and uh, 3400 research points. I'll see you in the conclusion. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. Now the Yak-23 still is a beast, 7.3, uh, 7.7 doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It does make a lot of difference for the uh, 6.3 planes. That is why I think this plane received such a small increment. It could have been 8.0, although you get into problems again then. I think uh, the 7.7 um, .7 battle rating will only start to make a difference when there is valid 8.3 and 8.7 battle ratings. Maybe also 9.3 and 9.7 for the top tier jets. And um, save the 8.0 from... Um, the point where they are at right now but uh, all in all but that's a whole different discussion this plane is uh, still very good at 7.7 .7, faces a lot of planes that it can compete with and uh, yeah still a joy to fly guys i hope you enjoyed the review i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time
Bye bye. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment, and if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.